Today on The Joy of Editing, it's the TK Magic Mixer mastering black and white conversions with color channels. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm working with the TK Magic Mixer. It's a great tool for turning color images into black and white images. Today I'll be using color channels to help me to get my black and white conversion. If you don't own the TK Magic Mixer, I'll leave a link for it in the description below this video. It'll take you over to Tony Kuiper's web store where you can pick it up. It's only $10 and it's well worth it. Not only can you make black and white conversions with it, but you can also use it to work on color images also. It's really cool. If you don't have it yet, pick yours up today. The image I'm using in today's edit is a stock image. I'll leave a link for it in the description below this video in case you want to give this black and white conversion a try. Let's go ahead and get started. Now here's my TK Magic Mixer. And to make a black and white conversion, make sure you do not have LUM checked on. This is for working with color when this is checked on. For black and white conversions, make sure the LUM checkbox is unchecked and then click the plus to add a Magic Mixer layer. But now let me show you a different way we could go about this. For now, I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer by clicking on my trash can on my combo panel. So that's one way of doing it, clicking the plus. But another way of doing this is you could click on this button right here, which will randomly go through different black and white conversions. But if you're going to work with color channels, I recommend that you start out by clicking on the red channel. And now you're going to get another magic mixer and it is set for the red channel. So try to remember what that looks like and then what i like to do is go through all the different channels now that's red here is green i like green because the lips are dark and that looks really nice here is blue i don't like blue as much but i can make some adjustments here if i needed to here is cyan now i really don't like cyan because the face and the arm gets really dark here is magenta Magenta is not bad, but I don't like the light lips. And now here is yellow. Yellow is really ethereal looking. Not bad. No, I could work with that if I needed to. But my favorite so far, I think, was the green. So let me click on green. Now this is green and I have the nice dark lips. If I go to red, red's not bad. It's a little bit lighter, more of a high key look. I don't like the lips so much. So I'm going to go and settle for green. So let me click on green. Now we don't have to stop here. We can make some further adjustments right here with the channel mixer. I like the way the hair and the lips look, but I would like to lighten up the face a little bit. Now, you see this button right here looks like an eye. If you click it, you can shut off the Magic Mixer layer, and you'll notice we have some red and some yellow in the flesh tones. So if I wanted to lighten up the flesh tone, let me turn this layer back on by clicking this button again. If I take the cyan red slider, move it to the right, or the yellow blue and move it to the left, I will lighten up that flesh tone. So let me take the red slider and I'll just start to drag it to the right a little bit. See how that flesh tone starts to lighten up a little bit? And I think maybe right there looks really good. And I think I'm going to stop at that point. To recap a little bit, my first step was to go through the different color channels and find one I like. After I get one I like, in this case it was the green channel, then I went ahead and lightened up the red a little bit by taking the cyan red slider and moving it more towards red, lightening up the flesh tone. And then at that point, my next step would be to click this button. And when you do, you get this color luminosity layer and it sits under the magic mixer layer and it's looking at the colors of the image before it's processed into black and white on this layer. And you will notice we have red, yellow, green, cyan, blues, and magentas that we can adjust. There's not a whole lot of color in this image, but I know I have reds and yellows here. These lips have red in them. So if I take this red slider and drag it to the left, watch these lips. I want to darken them up a little bit. So I'll drag this to the left. You see how they darken up somewhat? But I've darkened up my face, but I can offset that with this yellow slider. So I'll take the yellow slider and drag it to the right. And see how I can lighten up the face a little bit more to maybe somewhere right about there. 
Now I have these really nice dark lips. The face is still light, but notice the glossy area on the lips right here. I think if I take the magenta slider and start to drag it to the right, I can lighten up that glossy look. So let's see if I can do that. Watch the lips. I'm going to drag this to the right. See how that lightens those up a little bit? I can bring that glossiness out a little bit. And I think maybe right about there. And I really like that. Let me shut off the color loom layer. This is before and this is after. I really like this black and white conversion. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to put a vignette on this image. And to do that, look for your TK action button on either the combo or CX panel. If your actions aren't open, click the TK button. My actions are open on my CX panel, so I'm just going to click vignette. Now, this will give me a basic vignette. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up. I just always click OK. If you watch my TK Friday videos, you see me doing this all of the time. Now, that's a dark vignette. Let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here is after. But I don't think I want a dark vignette. This is more of a high key look to this image. So I want a light vignette around the edges. So to do that on either the combo or CX panel, look for your SCR button for screen blend mode and give that a click. And now we add a lightning effect to the edges. And what I want to do right Right now, my opacity is at 30%. I'm going to click right here in this drop down, and I just want to lighten up the edges a little bit more to somewhere, maybe right, I don't know, maybe 70%. Let me shut off the vignette. Here is before and here's after, and I do like that lightning look. Maybe I'll just pull it back a little bit, maybe back to like right there, 65%. Now let's take a look at the before and after. I'll shut off the vignette. Here's before the vignette, and here is after the vignette, and I like it. I like the lightning effect because it adds to the overall dreamy look of this beautiful black and white conversion. Now let's see where we've come from. If I come to my combo panel and click my before after button, we started out here which was a really nice image and we end up here, but I truly love this in black and white. We're basically done, but what I always like to do after I'm done with my black and white conversion is click on this button on the Magic Mixer panel, or you could click on this button on the Combo or CX panel. I'll click on this button on the Magic Mixer panel and we get a live clipping layer here. Now what you wanna look for is red overlay. See the little bit of red there? I'm clipping my whites right there and I need to fix that. If I was clipping shadows, you would see blue on any clip shadows. And what we can do is place a curves adjustment layer right under the live clipping layer. Right now, vignette is active. So I'm gonna click this button on my multi mask panel to add a curves adjustment layer. And what we need to do is make this point active by clicking on it. This is for highlights. And watch the red right here. Right now, you see the output is at 255. On my keyboard, I'm typing my down arrow key one time. This goes to 254, and you'll notice the clipping is gone. If you had clipping in shadows, in this case we don't, you would see blue overlay on shadows that are clipped. All you would need to do is click on this point to make it active, and click your up arrow key one time to make the output go to one, and your shadow clipping would be gone. But I don't have shadow clipping, so I can click my down arrow key to put this back to zero but i just wanted to point that out after you're done with this live clipping layer you got to get rid of it so if you click this button right here on the magic mixer to get live clipping you have to click it again if you click this button on the combo or cx panel for live clipping you will add a second live clipping layer which you don't want i got this live clipping layer by clicking this button so i'll click it again and now my live clipping layer goes away and now one more time, let's see an overall before and after. On my combo panel, I'll click my before after button. I start it out here and I end up here with this beautiful black and white conversion. I hope you give this black and white conversion to try. Now, don't forget you can download the image. I have links in the description below this video. I did slightly crop this image, so you'll notice your download will look a little different. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.